if I don't seem to have quite a pep in my step this morning, it's because me and Amy played volleyball all day Friday and Saturday. It feels like we played volleyball all, all Friday and Saturday. But uh, Caitlin got in for the first time this season in a volleyball game because of her knee injury. So uh, she did great. And we have no voice. Still got a little headache. So this should be all kinds of fun right here. <laughs> Get up, get up, get up in Jesus' name. The Lord is calling daily to those who would be saved. Don't go down to feed air, cause victory's here to claim. I get up, get up, I get up in Jesus' name. At the gate called Beautiful, they laid out in the street. A poor and holy beggar's crippled in his feet. As John and Peter passed him, they saw his need was bad. They had no gold or silver, but they gave him what they had. But get up, get up, get up in Jesus' name. The Lord is calling daily to those who would be saved. Don't go down defeated, cause victory's here to claim. I get up, get up, I get up in Jesus' name. In the days in which we live, and there's evil everywhere, the body seems to curse and overcome with fear. Well, God is needing soldiers to get out of the pew and take a hold of the power that John and Peter used. Well, get up, get up. Get up in Jesus' name. The Lord is calling daily to those who would be saved. Don't go down defeated, cause victory's here to claim. Yeah, get up, get up, get up in Jesus' name. Get up, get up, get up in Jesus' name. wake you up. If you have your Bibles, turn to Joshua chapter 5. We're going to read verses 13 through chapter 6, verse 5. Very familiar passage. Let the church be the church. Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell down on the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place you are standing is holy. So Joshua did so. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with his king and his fighting men. March around the city once with all armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. And on the seventh day, march around the city seven times with priests blowing the trumpets. And when you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse, and the army will go out, and everyone will go straight in. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his holy word. Let's pray together. Lord, you give us directions. You gave Joshua directions to follow. He followed those, and the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. 
You have given this church directions. You have told us what to do and you expect us to do it. So let us be the church for this community. For 220 years we have stood here. We have been a part of this community. Lord, let us continue to do the work that you have assigned us to do. Help us to follow your directions. Never let us waver from what you have given us to do. Thank you, Lord, for this church, for the people here. Thank you for this community. There's much work to be done. May we continue to follow your will. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What do you say to someone who feels like they've lost it all? Over the edge with no one there to break their fall. And what do you say to someone who feels so unloved? Giving themselves away a little bit every day just to be good enough. And what do you say to a hopeless soul? can't remember their way home. I can't hear it. It's, I, I'm not hearing it. I'm only hearing air. <laughs> Start it again. Sorry. I can't hear it. <laughs> you all probably could. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm... anyway. Now if I mess up, I won't have an excuse, will I? <laughs> I know it's all on now. Sorry. <laughs> but I, maybe we'll hear that four-beat intro. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Jamie. What do you say to someone who feels like they've lost it all? Over the edge with no one there to break their fall. And what do you say to someone who feels so unloved? Giving themselves away a little bit every day just to be good enough. What do you say to a hopeless soul who can't remember their way home when everything is out of their control? There is no valley, there is no darkness, there is no sorrow greater than the grace of Jesus. There is no
Thank you, Rebecca. Glad you started over. <laughs> Gorgeous. Nothing greater than grace. Most of you women can attest that Men do not like to ask for directions. So we are grateful for GPSs. But even with GPS, we think we know more than that little woman on GPS trying to tell us where to make turns. I can't tell you how many things I have tried to put together without reading directions. You know, I just kind of look at the highlights, you know. About halfway through, I try to look at the, the highlights. But women are pretty bad, too. You know, I know my wife, she gets books. She loves reading books, and she kind of peeks at the last chapter to see what's going to happen before she reads the whole book. Putting things together are not my thing. I lose my religion putting together the simplest of things. <laughs> Screwdrivers go flying. Pliers go flying. Things get broken. I was a young pastor in the prime of my life. Josh was... I guess he was two or three years old. We had just accepted a church down in South Carolina. We lived in a parsonage on the corner of Highway 246 and Vines Road. Everybody knew where the preacher of Siloam Baptist Church lived. And I went to Sears and Roebuck and I ordered a gym set, swing set. Couldn't just order something simple, two swings and a slide board. No. He had to have the fireman's pole, the big slide, the monkey bars. He had to have the best that the catalog had. For y'all who don't know what a catalog is, it was way before the internet. <laughs> So we ordered it, it came in, and I brought it home in my pickup truck, my new blue 1976 blue pickup truck that got eight miles to the gallon. <laughs> and I unpacked it from those mini boxes that it had, and it must have had 25 million bolts and nuts. And it took me eight months to put that thing together <laughs> in our big old backyard. But really, I put it together about four times because I put it together backwards. I put it together upside down. I put it together sideways. I put it together more ways than you can imagine. Wow. 
mainly because I didn't read the directions. Because it looked like these things went here and these things went there, and it make it make. I hate putting things together. We were over here the other night. We were packing those packets to go out, and there was a little tray here, a little cart here that needed to be put together. So Ronnie Griggs was here. I said, Ronnie, I got a project for you. And Ronnie put it together in no time. I don't like putting things together. I hate reading directions. God's given us a book of directions. It's called the Bible. And most of us don't like reading that book. Because we don't like what we find in there most of the time. It tells us how to live our life, and we would rather live our life our own way than to live the life the way God wants us to live it. There's too many things he tells us to do and too many things he tells us not to do. And we would rather live the, our life the way we want to live our own life. This morning we find instructions for Joshua. Instructions from the Lord. Specific instructions. Hebrew children have inherited the promised land and now they're about to inhabit one of the cities, Jericho. But there's huge walls around the city. There seems to be no way to penetrate those walls to get inside the city. But God has a plan. All Joshua has to do is listen to God's plan and his people will be victorious. We find in verse 14 that Joshua encounters a man. And it says there that he fell face down to the ground in reverence to him, face down on the ground, in reverence. What does that mean? Well, it means that he fell face down because he was a man of God. He worshipped. Let the church be the church. Folks, for 220 years, we have basically stood on this ground. There have been three churches, and if you count this building, this is the fourth place that we have worshipped right here in Franklinton. That's a long time to survive. We've been through a civil war, two world wars, a Korean war, Vietnam war, and all the conflicts we've had recently. This church has lost a lot of young men and young women to wars. We've been through many epidemics, including this COVID crisis. God put this church here for 220 years to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to worship. And when we lose our focus, we'll cease to be a church. We come here each and every week to worship, not to be entertained, not to fellowship, 
but to worship God, to keep our eyes on the cross, to preach Jesus for no other reason. If the church is going to continue to be the church, we must always worship. Other things are important. Fellowship is important. Ministry is important. The things that come out of worship are important. But we are to worship. If the church is to continue to be the church, we must continue to focus on the cross of Jesus Christ and we must worship. Just Joshua fell prostrate on the ground. If you come here for any other reason on Sunday morning, you have come for all the wrong reasons. This is a place of worship. Then if you look at verse 15, said take your shoes off for your own holy ground remember when God spoke to Moses in the desert and says Moses take your shoes off your own holy ground what does that mean It's a custom in the Middle East that when you go into someone's home that you take your shoes off and you leave them at the front door. Why? You're to do it in reverence. Moses, take your shoes off in reverence to me. Joshua, take your shoes off in reverence. When I was growing up, we had hardwood floors. Before hardwood floors were the fashionable thing to have, we had them because we were poor. But all of a sudden, shag carpet was the thing to have in your house. I mean, shag carpet. So my mom installed this ugly shag green carpet. Oh, Lord, you could lose your marbles in there and not find them for a week. You went outside and got a yard rake and you raked that stuff back. I mean, it had to have a, all you old folks know what I'm talking about. Shag carpet. And all of a sudden, us boys couldn't come in outside with our shoes on. We had to take our shoes off at the door because we couldn't track dirt in on the shag carpet. It was okay to drag dirt in on the wood floors, but not the shag carpet. Because if you got it dirty, it was hard to vacuum. And then you had to hire somebody to come in and clean that stuff every now and then. It was expensive. And she had gold carpet in the living room, which that was, that was absolutely off limits. That was only for the WMU to come in and have their parties once a month or once a month, uh, once a, every other month. You take your shoes off in reverence. You take your shoes off in the Middle East to keep from dragging dirt into the home.
Take your shoes off, folks, when you come into worship. You see, when we come in here, God wants you to leave your shoes at the front door. You may be dirty when you come in, but he wants you to come in here and get cleaned up. If you drag your sins in through those front doors and you have no intention of coming here getting cleaned up, and you leave here the same person that you came in here, and you leave here the same as you were when you came in, you didn't come to worship. You came for all the wrong reasons. See, if the church is the church, it changes people. Jesus does that to people. He changes you. He cleans you up and sends you on your way. But I'm afraid the church, the 21st century, is a church that tends to entertain. It's a church that tends to pat us on the back and say, it's okay. It's okay to go out on Saturday night and do whatever you want to do and come to church on Sunday morning. And leave there the same person you were when you came in. No. Folks, we've okayed sin way too long. Now don't get me wrong. Don't, don't hear me wrong. Sinners are welcomed. All of us are dirty when we walk in the door. The dirtier the better. We've got to love the sinner. But see, when sinners walk in the door, Jesus should be in a changing business. Dirty diapers stink, don't they? And you don't take a baby with a dirty diaper and take them back to the bedroom and say, whew, that stinks. And then send them back to the living room with the same dirty diaper. You change that diaper and send them back to the living room with a nice clean diaper and if the church is to be the church that God wants it to be we've got to start changing the center Jesus can do that the church has got to preach that we can't pat people on the back and send them on the way and say it's okay We got to take our shoes off. Let Jesus wash our feet, cleanse us of our sins, and make a different, make us a different person when we walk out the door. If you're living in adultery when you walk through that door, you need to be a different person when you walk out that door. If you are a liar and a cheater when you walk in that door, you need to be a different person when you walk out that door. Church should change people. I'm way afraid that too many of our churches have become country clubs. We've become entertainment centers. We've become a place for people to gather. We've become sports clubs. This is a place of worship. We've got to love people. But we've got to love them so we can help change them. And only Jesus Christ can do it. I can't do it. But the love of Jesus Christ can do that. Let the church be the church. That's why we're here. 
all the things that we do here are great. All the children's programs we have and all the youth programs we have and all the camps we have and all the activities we have and, and everything that, that you can name that we have, those things are awesome. They're good, and I support all of them, and I'm, and I'm, I'm grateful that we can do all those things. But, folks, when we cease to worship and when we cease to change lives, then we've missed the point. We have quit being the church that God wants us to be. Every time we walk through those doors, we need to fall face down on the ground and worship God. We're not here for Jamie to entertain us. We're not here because you like me as a preacher. We're not to come here to see our best friend or a boyfriend or a girlfriend. We're not here because huh, I have nowhere else to go today. We're here to worship an awesome God. We're to magnify his name. This should be the place we want to be every Sunday morning because this is where we should meet God. Whether it's here in this building or across the street in a little white church, it's where I go to meet God every Sunday. It's where I want to be. It's where, I, it's where my heart wants to be. It's where I long to be is to be with God, to worship Him. And I want to hear His word. I want to meet him, and I want him to change my life. I want to go there and be washed in the blood. I want all the dirt removed from my life. And if God's not changing you, there's something wrong. If you're wallowing in the same sin week after week after week, you're not allowing God to wash you. You're not taking off your shoes. Somehow you're missing the point. We've got to let the church be the church. This old church, Franklin and Baptist Church, is facing tough times. Many of you are new. You don't even know. <laughs> you, you don't know. You don't know what this whole ship has been through. Man, we've been through some battles. We were almost sunk. We will sink if we cease being the church that God intends for us to be. 220 years. How awesome is that? Old devil is struck hard. Don't cease being the church. God intends for us to be. Be here next Sunday. We're going to celebrate. We're going to worship. We're going to take our shoes off. God's been good to us. Let's continue to be the church that God wants us to be. Right here in the burg, a little place called Franklin, Kentucky. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for these people. And Lord, if there's one here today who doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, may today be the day. If there's one here today who needs to take their shoes off and repent of the sin in their life and be washed in the blood, Lord, I'd pray today would be the day this is a place that should change lives. 
not just some days, but every single Sunday. These lives should be touched and changed. Let the church be the church that you intend for it to be. Help us to follow your instructions. Help us to never waver from what you want us to be right here at Franklin Baptist Church. This is your invitation, Lord. Use it for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.